In the previous episode, Rar found himself at a crossroads. The fates were still spinning his choices into existence when an impertinent seagull scored a direct hit on his face in a flyby pooping. Incensed, Rar gave chase, a relentless pursuit across the cityscape and over rooftops all the way to a treacherous cliffside where the bird's nest lay in wait. There, staring into the innocent eyes of ten chicklets, one of which bravely nuzzled up to him, Rar's hardened heart softened. He spared the seagull only for a gargantuan bird, a rock hatchling, to swoop down, snatching the pardoned bird and setting off an unexpected chain of events. Rar, in a fit of outrage, leapt onto the monstrous bird, triggering a cascading freefall into the ocean, ending in the rock hatchling's demise beneath Rar's mighty axe. But Rar's trials were far from over. The parent rock, a titanic creature casting a terrifying shadow over the sea, swooped down and gripped Rar in its talons, hoisting him high over the city of Waterdeep. In a move of sheer audacity, Rar broke free from the rock's grip and plunged headfirst towards the city below. His descent ended abruptly, landing headfirst within the vault of one of Aurorus's premier banks. Swiftly detained, Rar found himself sharing a jail cell with a new face, the notorious Captain Jake Eagle. For the next three days, they found themselves in the company of each other's tales until a mysterious voice echoed through their minds and the minds of the party. This ominous voice issued a challenge, a two versus two death match with knowledge as the prize for their performance in his malevolent theater. With anticipation hanging in the air, our party accepted the gauntlet thrown down. The moment acceptance dances on your lips, a tug at the core of your being sweeps you away, drawing you into a setting far removed from anything you've known. In an instant, you all materialize on a spectral islet surrounded by the ethereal expanse of the astral sea, its otherworldly brilliance twinkling around you. Rar and Tronald stand side by side at one end of this island arena, their gazes locked with Saxeron and Celestia, poised on the opposing shore. The voice of Alexander resonates once again, its somber tones echoing across the tranquil astral expanse. A single preparatory round is yours, but no offensive move shall be made yet. Within this island's heart, twin chests lay, their contents promising a considerable edge to the team that claims them. Remember, give it your all. But most importantly, have fun. As soon as the final words leave his lips, you hear a dong that echoes across the island, signifying the start of the battle. I'm going to need everyone to roll for initiative. By everyone, I'm assuming you don't mean me, Joe? No, sorry, not you, Jake. You're on the sidelines amidst the spectral figures. Oh, excellent. They don't look all too friendly, though. That's a 15 for me, Joe. A 12 for me. A 13 over here. And a 16 for Tronald. Okay, so it's Tronald up first. What you doing? I'm going to run over that bridge, Joe, towards the chest and cast mage armor. Well, of course, that's to be expected. The little loot goblin heading straight for the chest. You heard, Alexander, this chest contains a powerful buff. Not like we need it, but let's just wrap this up quickly, shall we? Okay, Tronald, your mage armor is up. Now it's Celestia's turn. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is head 10 feet towards Saxy, then cast Bless on him and myself before using the rest of my movement to make my way onto the bridge. Nice. Is that the end of your turn then? Sure is, Joe. Awesome. Now it's Rar's go. What you doing, buddy? I'm going to use my action to dash towards the chest on the right-hand side, jumping straight over the clearing. Okay. I'm going to need you to roll an athletics check for me, dude. That's a 12. Rar, you seize the initiative and charge headlong towards the island divide. You spring into the air, but with a roll of 12, you realize the soft and treacherous earth beneath your launch point was less than ideal. The world seems to slow down as you sail through the air, the edge of the other side approaching at a menacing speed. A breath of relief escapes you as you barely manage to clear the gap, your footfalls landing with jarring abruptness on the other side. The leap was successful, if not a hair's breadth away from a total miss. Now it's your turn, Saxiron. Damn it, I've got no buff spells, and as per Alexander's rules, I can't use a debuff or an attack. Fuck it. I'm gonna run 60 feet with a dash down the side, which Celestia is on, over the bridge, and try to take some cover behind the tree. All right, so top of the round, Tronald, you're up. Okay, Joe, I'm gonna move over here, then cast Firebolt at Celestia before retreating back behind this little bush for cover. That's what I'm talking about, natural 20, baby. No fucking way, dude. Yes fucking way, dude. That's a total of 14 fire damage. Tronald, you charge forth across the narrow stone bridge. After obtaining a line of sight, the opportunity to strike unveils itself. With a swift incantation, a bolt of searing fire erupts from your fingertips, streaking towards Celestia with lethal precision. The flames kiss the air, twisting and writhing before they land with a ferocious intensity, singeing her hair and searing her clothes. And then, with a cunning swiftness, you retreat 
the nearby shrubbery offering partial concealment from potential attackers. Now it's your turn, Celestia. Okay, first of all, I'm going to move over here and shout, Fuck you, Tronald. Then I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at his dumbass, which is still very much visible through the small bush. Well, I assume my AC is currently plus two due to partial cover, right, Joe? I'm going to be honest with you, dude. The bush might be great for a slight concealment, but you threw a fucking firebolt into her face, then ran behind a bush with no actual attempt at stealth. It would be blatantly obvious to Celestia where you ran to, and a shrub really isn't going to act as much of a barrier between you and a Guiding Bolt, is it? So what you're telling me is running behind this bush was a giant fucking waste of time. That pretty much sums it up, yeah, dude. Right. Huh. That's a 16 to hit, plus a 3 for my bless. Oh no, you got me. Screw you, dude. Just do your stupid cheese already. I cast shield, Joe. Of course you do. No, this is good. We will whittle his cheese down until he has none left to churn. You will never diminish my cheese. Okay, Tronald. With a successful manipulation of the arcane, you wave your hand in front of you, deflecting the guiding bolt entirely. Rar, it's your go. Okay, I'm gonna run over to the chest, loot it with my action before making my way over towards Tronald, and then I'm gonna fucking rage. Rar, as you unlatch the chest, an enchanting melody caresses your ears, a harmonious symphony that resonates with the air around you. The chest begins to illuminate from within, revealing two potent boons, a vial shimmering with the vibrant glow of a greater spectral healing potion that can heal any creature anywhere on the map with a healing surge of 4d4 plus 4, or a pair of enchanted heavy throwing axes, their edges gleaming ominously, their heft perfect for your strength. You get the sense that you can only choose one. I'm gonna go with the spectral healing potion, Joe. Nice choice, buddy. Awesome, now it's Saxy's turn. All right, well, I'd have used fairy fire, but he's only gonna just move out of the area it's affecting. So instead, I'm going to run to the chest using my dash and open it with my bonus action. Saxiron, as you approach and unlatch the chest, it begins to croon a tune that surrounds the air around you. As the melody swells, the chest's interior radiates a soft glow, laying the choice between two boons for your taking. One, the familiar iridescent vial of a greater spectral healing potion, capable of healing any creature across the battlefield. The other, a mystical amulet, pulsating with the raw force of nature. This amulet offers the power to summon a formidable brown bear anywhere on this battlefield. Do note, though, this beast does not discriminate. Once summoned, it will follow its primal instincts, striking the nearest creature without hesitation, and will act on its own initiative. What is it with you and fucking bears, Joe? I like bears. I'm gonna go with the bear and summon it in between Rar and Tronald blocking Rar's path to us. Oh, fuck me. I'm getting some seriously bad PTSD. Saxiron, no sooner do your fingers make contact with the amulet than it throbs with untamed vitality. It's as if a primal force is trapped within, champing at the bit to burst free. You brace yourself, fix your aim, and then the world shatters into a blur. With a ferocious surge of arcane might, the amulet detonates in your grip. What follows is an explosion of raw elemental energy that takes the form of a monstrous bear. <laughs> Fuck me! Roaring, it surges forth from the ethereal vortex, its body materializing with a thunderous thud right next to Rar and Tronald. Its guttural growl rumbles across the battlefield, a visceral challenge to all within earshot. Hex, I call Hex. All right, well, let's roll the bear's initiative. Damn, it rolled a natural 20, so it's at the top of the round, which just so happens to be right now. I'm gonna roll a d6. Evens it attacks Rar. Odds it attacks Tronald. That's a two so it's gonna come straight for that orcish booty. Will you just fuck off? <laughs> it's gonna take its multi-attack towards you. Well, it rolled absolute shit. That's a seven and a 13 total. Am I right in thinking they both miss? You're damn right they both miss. Get the fuck away from me, you overgrown beaver. <laughs> Can you please stop fucking screaming at us, Joe? Seriously, every time you do it catches me off guard. <laughs> Good talk, Joe. Right, it's my turn now. I'm gonna run onto the bridge thingy and cast Vortex Warp on the bear and move it next to Celestia, which should be around 30 feet from my spot. Then I'm going to take a jump into the water and go five feet under to try and get some cover. Interesting, all right, let me roll the saving throw for this bear. Wow, that's a 10. It's literally rolled absolutely shocking for everything other than its initiative so far. Celestia and Saxiron, you watch as a spectacle unfolds before your eyes. The space around the colossal bear quivers, a miniature singularity blossoming into existence, pulling and warping the very fabric of reality around it. The bear itself is consumed, absorbed by the distortion in a terrifying display of cosmic force. And then, as abruptly as it began, it ends. The singularity collapses, leaving nothing behind. 
An instant later, the bear reappears right beside you, Celestia, materializing from nothingness as the final reverberations of the singularity's power dissipate. The sudden, thunderous re-entry of the beast next to you sends a rush of adrenaline through your veins, the roar of the beast echoing in your ears. Oh great, this doesn't bode well. Yeah, it's not nice when you're the ones being screamed at, is it? All right, Celestia, it's your turn. Okay, so I'm gonna cast Healing Word on myself and then use Guiding Bolt on Rar. That's seven points total healed and a 17 to hit Rar. Yeah, that hits me. So that's 21 points of radiant damage to you. Reduced to 10 because of my rage. Damn, I still find it kind of crazy how your rage halves everything except psychic damage. I've got to hand it to you, Rar. That trick of yours is mighty impressive. Count myself lucky I'm not on the receiving end. Okay, Rar, it's your turn. I'm going to use my action again to dash next to Celestia, and that's it for my turn. Okay, you're up, Saxy. I'm going to jump into the water where I saw Tronald go. Then I'm going to use a booming blade attack on him to try lock him down. That's a 20 total to hit. I cast shield, Joe. Go right ahead, Tronald. Keep using up them slots. So just a heads up, Tronald, you are underwater, and whilst you can cast verbal components whilst underwater, doing so will drastically reduce the amount of time you can hold your breath whilst there. So if you want to take it back, I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah, I take it back then. Otherwise, Saxy's just going to try some cheap maneuver like drowning me. Instead of my shield, I use one of my luckies. Okay, reroll your attack, Saxy. For fuck's sake, that's a 15 to hit. Ha, you miss. Don't forget you're blessed, dude. Oh shit, yeah, thanks for the reminder, Celestia. That's a two, so it brings me to a 17 total. God damn it, now I use one of my shields. Joe, you've gone and made me waste one of my luckies. I didn't make you do anything, dude. You chose to change your course of action. And just a heads up, Tronald, I am absolutely going to try and drown you. Joe, how many turns do I have before I start taking damage from drowning? I'd say your next turn is the last you can have without taking damage. After all, you have expended all the air in your lungs by casting shield. Well, this isn't great. All right, now it's the bear's turn. <laughs> it's going to make a multi-attack on you, Celestia. That's an eight for its bite and an 18 for its claw attack. The 18 hits me. So that's 10 points of slashing damage to you. That brings us to Tronald. What you gonna do, Tronald? You're going to give me an attack of opportunity on you, that's what. Right, okay, Joe, I cast Vortex Warp on Saxeron, teleporting him 30 feet further underwater. Oh, and Saxy, don't bother rolling because I'm giving you my portent five. Then I'm gonna climb out of the water and onto the bridge. Fuck you, Tronald. Wow, nicely done, dude. Okay, you're up, Celestia. So first things first, I'm gonna disengage to get myself out of this situation. Then I'm gonna run into the water next to Tronald, then climb up onto the bridge at the other side of him. Then I'm gonna cast Healing Word at level two on myself. Nice, how much do you heal? That's eight points of healing. Okay, that brings us to you, Rar. What's the plan? I'm going to use another Rage. Then I'll run up to Celestia and give her a very intimate introduction to my great axe. Fuck yeah, that's a natural 20. Oh no. That's a 10, doubled to 20, then I add my modifiers, so that's a 26 total. Well, fuck, I'm down. Rar, the raw power of your charge sends you thundering towards Celestia, axe at the ready. It cleaves through the air, honed edge meeting its target with a resounding thud. Striking down a comrade isn't a sensation you're used to. It's an eerie feeling, yet you know from countless battles that there is no room for sentimentality on the field of war. Your axe, an extension of your will, delivers a lethal blow, severing the thread of Celestia's life. Her figure crumples, the force of your assault casting her down onto the unyielding earth below, her life extinguished in that one brutal moment. I hope you've got something incredible stashed away, Saxy. Otherwise, I think this might be a big L for Team Selexeron. There's no way we can let these two win. We'll never hear the end of it. That brings us to you, Saxeron. I swim my full movement speed upwards. Can I reach Celestia? Unfortunately not. Tronald teleported you another 30 feet down, so that would only bring you to where you started from. For fuck's sake. Okay, in that case, I use my defensive field as a bonus action, giving me three temporary health. Then I'm going to cast Firebolt at Rar. Just to let you know, it's a slightly awkward angle, so it's going to add two to Rar's AC. Fuck. Why does he roll a natural 20? Then I roll a natural fucking one. It's just the luck of the roll, my friend. Sure, you can pin it down on luck, or maybe Rar just has a connection with the threads of fate that you could never hope to understand. Okay, then now it's the bear's turn. Damn, that's a natural 20 for the bear's first attack and an 18 total for the second. It's okay, it's just a bear, right? I really feel like our last encounter has bigged them up to be far more dangerous than they actually are. All right, so that's 30 points of damage to you, Rar. What the fuck, Joe? Oh my. Well, for a start, that's halved because of my rage, so I only take 15 points of damage. See, it wasn't that bad, was it? Anyway, it's Tronald's turn now. All righty then, Joe. I'm going to aim my hands at a downward angle towards where I can see Saxy creeping. Then I'm gonna cast Burning Hands at him. I also wanna make sure I'm catching Celestia with this as well. Ah, uh, thanks, dude. Right. Well, I'm in water, so how exactly do you see a fire spell working, Tronald? Well, you just answered your own question, silly. 
It's a spell, not a natural fire. So it should work exactly as I intended it to. Donald's right, dude. Magical fires really don't have the same weaknesses exposed to them as a natural fire would. And seeing as there's nothing in the rules that explicitly state any different interaction a fire spell would have with water, I'm going to allow it. Well, of course you would allow it. You're clearly just taking favorites. Well, that's a little out of order, buddy. There's been many times when I have either homebrewed or bent the rules for something cool for you. Remember the cannonballs? And what about that fancy armor you can now equip and unequip as a free action? Sorry, Joe, you're right. I'm just getting a little heated. You're gonna be more than a little heated once this spell hits you, bucko. Ha! That's a good one, Tronald. He's going to be more heated because you're casting a fire spell on him. Amazing. Thanks for explaining it to me, Rar. You absolute simpleton. I'm finding this all a little confusing, to be honest. What's confusing about Joe allowing your stupid spell to work? It's just that I was sure the water around us was fresh water, yet you're so damn salty. Oh, haha. Ha. Fuck you, Tronald. Mad cause bad. All right, Tronald. So your spell's gonna work. How about you roll your damage? All right, so that's 13 points of fire damage. What's the extra rolls for, dude? And 26 points of emotional damage. Well, aren't you just fucking hilarious? Oh, I know. Tronald, the weave of your incantation takes form as a searing cascade of flame. It detonates on contact with the water, the resulting shockwave spreading outwards in a fiery spectacle. Steam erupts from the surface, a hot mist created from the merging elements of fire and water. The heat reaches Saxy, a brutal assault that feels like a lobster being seared within a boiling pot. The arena echoes with the hiss of rapidly evaporating water. Water. Take that, you mechanical lobster. You also take one death saving throw, Celestia. But now it's your turn. Roll me a death saving throw. Just don't roll a natural one, Celestia. We can recover from this. I'll do you one better, Saxy. How about a natural fucking 20? Damn, girl. Nice one. See, Celestia knows how to treat her dice to get results. You should really take some tips off her. Amazing. Celestia, in the brink of the abyss, a surge of vitality courses through your veins. A miraculous resurgence, the divine intervention of your deity, or perhaps the mysterious dance of fate. Your eyes flicker open, the world snaps back into focus. You rise, the ashes of near death clinging to your form, yet you stand radiant and defiant, as if awoken from a dream. This is classed as the top of your turn, so what are you gonna do? Okay, well let's be real. If I use my turn to heal myself, Rar is just going to fuck me up. So this is all on you, Saxy. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt on Rar. Wait, I'm sorry, Celestia. I was going to use this on your death save, but then I thought that would be a little too mean. I'm using my portent natural one on your attack roll. Wow, you're such a buzzkill, dude. Really, Tronald? You couldn't give her one moment of epicness? Moments of epicness are earned, not given. Wow, you really do possess such wisdoms, Tronald. Well, that was my last spell slot, so I guess that's the end of my turn. Okay then, Rar, it's your turn. I'm going to jump in the water, taking the attack of opportunity from the stupid fucking bear, and make a cleaving attack downwards towards Saxy as I jump. Is that with disadvantage because he's attacking me whilst I'm in water? Well, you're only actually in the top five feet of the water at this point, so if he's making a jumping attack towards you, I feel like the momentum of the swing would carry through. I'll tell you what, just to make it a bit more fair, I'll give you a plus one to your AC for his attack. Okay, thanks, Joe. Let's roll the attack of opportunity for the bear. That's an 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits me. And seven points of damage reduced to three because of your rage. Incredible. That's a natural 19 for my attack against Saxy. This is a joke. And that's another 10 on my damage roll, which brings us to 16 points of slashing damage. Great, I had 16 health left, so that's me down. Nice. Wait, I forgot about my temp HP. I'm still up at three HP. Not nice. Nice work, dude. It's your turn now. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to use my defensive field again, which takes me to three regular HP and three temp HP. Then I'm gonna try something risky. I'm going to provoke the attack of opportunity from RAR and try to get over to Celestia to cast Cure Wounds on her. Okay, roll your attack of opportunity, RAR. Damn it, that's a 10 total. Unlucky, buddy. So you managed to get over to Celestia and cast Cure Wounds on her. How much do you heal her for? That's seven points of healing. Okay, now it's the bear's go. It's going to make its multi-attack against you, Tronald. That's a 15 and a 19 to hit. I'm going to use my last silvery barbs on the 19 to make it roll again. Then I'm going to give myself the advantage. It rolled even higher that time, so it still hits. That's eight points of slashing damage to you, Tronald. I'm fine. Well, it's your turn now. What are you going to do? I'm going to cast Firebolt on Celestia. And because I have an advantage from my silvery barbs, that cancels out the disadvantage from casting at point blank range. That's a three, but I'm gonna use one of my luckies to re-roll that, that's much better. My new roll is a 19 total. Yeah, that hits. And that's max damage, so 10 points of fire damage. And would you look at that, I'm down again. No hard feelings, it had to be done. All right, Celestia, give me a death saving throw, then it's your turn, Rar. That's a five. You've got six HP left, right, Saxy? So basically, if I hit you, you're dead. Yep, that's about right. 
Rest in peace, mechanical lobster. That's a 22 total to hit. Rar, emerging from the water, the liquid hissing into steam on your fury-ignited skin, you lift your mighty axe towards the heavens. The air thickens, drawn into the impending doom of your primal wrath. With a thunderous bellow, you unleash a cataclysmic strike upon Saxeron. The world reverberates to the discordant symphony of steel and bone as your weapon cleaves through his armor, sending him crashing into the water. A ripple of finality flows outwards. The battle has met its conclusion. The victors, Tronald and Rar. That was a piece of cake. The terrain beneath your feet shatters and dissolves the fabric of the illusionary world crumbling into the void, leaving you drifting in the vast emptiness of the astral plane. The ethereal voice of Alexander cuts through the tranquility, echoing across the infinite expanse. Bravo, victorious warriors. Now, each of you may request knowledge of any one thing that sparks your curiosity, and should it lie within my reach, I shall illuminate you with its truth. Have a think about what you guys want to ask him and also consider your options for you are all now level four. And that is where we will pick up next time. See you later, guys. Joe, I say join the Patreon. You know you want to. And I cast suggestion on the audience. Sweet. I'm going to need all of you to roll your saving throws. And if you fail, you know what you have to do. If you cheat, just remember, Rar sees all. <laughs>